All right, so uh, now we're going to get a little bit more in depth in, in our analysis here of the unit circle. So the first thing I want to talk about is the total circumference of the unit circle. Now this is going to be uh, useful for us as we talk about moving around the unit circle, uh, measuring different distances around the unit circle, etc. So if you remember, we have a formula for circumference. Um, uh, for those of you who don't remember, uh, we have circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r, where r is the radius of that circle. Okay. Now here, because it's my unit circle, remember it means I have a radius of 1, so my circumference here is going to be 2 pi times the radius, which is just 1, or simply 2 pi. Right. So what does that mean? Uh, circumference of 2 pi means that if I were to start right here, right here at x equals 1, y equals 0, and travel all the way around the circle, without backtracking, just you know, smoothly traveling around. And then I finished up and stopped traveling right where I started. I would have traveled a total distance of 2 pi units. Units being, you know, one unit of whatever measurement system we're using. So if this circle had a radius of 1 inch, I would have traveled 2 pi inches, etc. Okay? Oh. Let me clean this up a little bit. So this is useful when we get into this section because we're going to start talking about moving around the circle uh, just in the same fashion that I was just talking about. Now, just to, to get some of our um, standard terminology down, this point right here that I keep using, this point x equals 1, y equals 0, this is what's called my initial point. Now, we always use this as an initial point unless, you know, you're told otherwise, this is our kind of standard initial point. Now, you'll often be given a, a distance of a real number, and we use the variable t here a lot. So let's say t equals some number. Okay, so what that's going to mean is I'm traveling around the circle from my initial point, a distance of t. Now, just so we can get our directions clear, we need to know you know which direction we're going, right? Now this is my positive direction, this counterclockwise direction starting from my initial point. For This is going to be the direction that we travel for any t greater than zero, right? So this is my positive direction. Now if I have a negative value of t, I'm going to move in this clockwise direction, right? We, we denote this as my negative direction. So if I have a t that's less than zero, that means I'm traveling that absolute value of t distance, but in this clockwise negative direction. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, make this a little bit more clear. Let's say I have a t equals to pi. An easy example. t equals pi. So now pi, this is a positive value, so I'm going to start from my initial point, and I'm going to be traveling around in this positive direction. Now my total circumference is 2 pi, so if I go around the entire circle I go 2 pi, so if I'm only going a distance of 1 pi, that means I'm only going to be traveling half of the circle, and I'm going to be ending right here. Now any distance around the circle t is going to be associated with some point p. Now p here is going to be called the terminal point. Terminal point. Right? And what that means is that's the point at which my movement terminates. Right? I've already moved a distance of pi, which is the distance t that I'm given, and I end at a point p called my terminal point. Right? So over here, uh, this is my initial point, and wherever we end up, that is my terminal point. Now oftentimes we want to know what the point p is, and this is where my circumference comes in to play. Right? Um, I know my circumference is 2 pi, uh, like we just did, t equals pi puts me at halfway around the circle. Now I chose an easy one to start off with, so at t equals pi, my terminal point p is going to be, right, I have a radius of 1, but I'm here in this negative x direction, so that's negative 1, 0, right, I'm on the x-axis, so my y value is 0. Now notice that um, 
this isn't the only uh, t that's going to give me this point. Let's say I had t equals negative pi. Right? So if t is negative pi, that means I'm going to be starting here at my initial point. I'm going to be going a total distance of pi, right, which is half of my circle again, but in the negative direction. So I'm going here in the negative direction, and that ends me up right here, right, at this same p that I was at before. So t equals negative pi still gives me a terminal point p of negative 1, 0. And I could make, you know, as many of these t's as I want to give me the same terminal point. This is something that's very important um, to note that there's not a unique t to any point p. For example, let's say I had t equals 3 pi. So if t is 3 pi, okay, I'm positive again, right, so I'm starting at my initial point. I'm going around the circle 3 pi. So 2 pi means I'm going to go around the entire circle, and around the entire circle once. And then I have another pi to go, don't I? So I'm going to go around the circle another half time. And I end up right back here, again, at this same p. So my terminal point is p is negative 1, 0 again. So it's very important to note, this does not mean that pi equals negative pi equals 3 pi, right? We know that these are all different values, pi and negative pi and 3 pi are not the same thing. But the terminal points are all the same for these values of pi, or for, sorry, for these values of t. Okay, so that's something very important to note. Now, before I end this video and we go into to the next video and so some uh, more complex examples, I want to do one more example. I've just done a bunch of easy ones. So let's do one a little bit more complicated. And then in the, in the next video, we'll be going over some of these common values. So let's say I had a t equals negative pi over 2. Now, first thing I need to note, based on my circumference being 2 pi, I need to know what portion of the circle I'm traveling at pi over 2. And then I'm going to do that portion in the negative direction. So notice first that 2 pi, this is equal to 4 times pi over 2, isn't it? Right, that's pretty easy to see. This 4 times pi over 2 is going to give me 2 pi. So that means that pi over 2, this is going to be 1 fourth of 2 pi. Or in other words, it's going to be traveling around the circle just 1 fourth of the way around the circle, right? So starting at my initial point here, I'm going to move in the negative direction because my t is negative pi over 2. And I'm going to go 1 fourth of the circle, so that's going to put me right here. So I chose another easy one, right? This is located right on that y-axis. So my terminal point P associated with this T is going to P um, is going to be P. My x value is zero, and my y value here we see is negative one. So this is my terminal point associated with this um, real value T. All right. In the next video, we're going to be talking about a lot of the common values um, of these terminal points uh, based on some of these common values T.